Hey there, I'm Alex, and I'm going to talk to you about Kateri again today. And fi it looks like they finally released the two new models that they've been teasing for a while. They're, they are the Segment Anything, and this one is basically crypto mats for your footage, and the other model is the Llama. So it's a, an in-painting model. So just go ahead and open that for you and you see it's yeah in painting right so one thing to keep in mind is that these new two new models require nuke 15.1 so keep keep that in mind when you when you try to use it if you experience any issues if if they even run on on previous versions uh, from what I read, it is because the architecture of these models change and it's not compatible with the old version. So just keep that in mind. So today I'm gonna to be covering uh, the in-paint model, the Llama. I'm gonna show you a few examples here of uh, what uh, different different shots that I tested it on. And then uh, I'm gonna cover the the se segment anything on, on a separate video, uh, just so I can give this one the time. Okay, so I tried to find an image similar to what they have here on the demo with the, with their balloons and stuff. And you know, my first thought is uh, I didn't have a lot of success, but then after testing it on a few different shots, I realized it's it's not a magic node, right? It you need to more or less understand what it is doing to know whether it's going to be successful or not. And there's going to be a lot of trial and error. This is, of course, my, you know, my first day testing this, but um, I think it's it's a worthy addition to Kateri. So let me let me show you a few examples here, right? So I have two masks, one for the the air balloon back here, and one for the people in the front. And let me just show you the result, right? So if we look at the result here you see that what it's doing is it's filling the area, but it's trying to intelligently give you a pattern that fits with the surrounding area, right? So think about it as the clone tool in Photoshop, um, not generative fill, right? It's definitely not that smart. Uh, but if you if you see it tries to guess more or less what makes sense, you, you can still see a digital pattern which is why I'm saying you, it takes trial and error to understand and, and, and try to think of when it would be a good time to use it, right? But even so, this is this is a pretty good start to a cleanup if it's something that you need it to do. Whereas I have here an in-paint note for all my examples, just so I can show you, um, you know, of course, it's just baseline in-paint, but just so you can see, you can appreciate what it is doing. So I was expecting that the the balloon would be removed quite easily because it's just, you know, it's high contrast with with a, a bright background. So obviously I thought it was going to do a good job. But then, like I was saying, it's the details, right? It's that kind of stuff. Whereas if we look at the in-paint, it's like, yeah, okay, it does a good job here. But then it starts getting a bit messy down here. And of course, again, just vanilla in-paint, you would treat it a bit differently. But still, I think it's a, it's a pretty good result uh, considering what's going on in the shot. So let's move on to the next one here. And this one, I was absolutely convinced it was just going to fail. I wanted to get rid of as many features in the ceiling as I could, and I thought it's just gonna be a mess because there's just lines that are not necessarily straight. They, they, they go down in perspective, uh, not, not in, yeah, in perspective. And I was very pleasantly surprised that it is smart enough to keep things uh, coherent to what's going on around them. So the first vent here, I, I was, Vince, that if anything, it was just going to give me a good white gradient, but it actually introduces that line because it understands what's going on around it. And that's why I'm saying that you have to test it on different types of footage to really understand what's going on and to really know what to expect from the tool. And the nice thing about it is that it's not really that heavy, not, not heavy at all, at least in my experience. I never experienced any crash. Uh, whereas the segment, the segment anything is just a crash fest. I, 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 it, it has my 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 4090 uh, GPU is on its knees whenever I use it. So as you can see here, it's it's quite smart and it respects things of 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 the context. So if you if you look at the exit sign here, there there is the the wall meeting the ceiling, right? And that got painted in quite nicely. So there's quite a lot of removal back here, but it still makes sense when you paint everything. I'm gonna show you my my mats here. So I'm I'm being very, very loose with these mats. And what I what I realized after using it a bit is that 
you want to you want to give these mats some breathing room sometimes so if i if i go here and i let's say we want to make this a bit uh, a bit tighter sometimes the color starts getting a bit funky so you see there that tile is now darker than the rest and, and i i realize that if i if i just give it some space it does a better job of keeping it consistent right so you kind you kind of have to find that sweet spot but overall, I'm very, very impressed with this one. So if I if I show you some more examples here, I I got rid of the doorknob, right, just to see what would happen to that line. And again, it respects it. And interestingly enough, I thought this one might be one that failed. So there's there's like you see there's shadow on this side of the wall, and then there's shadow on the other side of the wall, and then there's a stream of light hitting the artwork right here in the middle. So I, I created a mat for that. And I was surprised to see that it respected everything. Like I, I thought even the area uh, having the wheelchair here against the wall, I thought was going to introduce some of that. But no, it, it actually did a, a really decent job of it. Uh, whereas if you were to do that with an in-paint node, of course, it just starts to get cloudy, right? So if we compare the llama versus the in-paint, and again, this is you know, very low effort, uh, two minute, th uh, two minute uh, mats, you, you can do a better job with the in paint. But having this available, it's like you have to think about it. If you, if you can achieve it with this and with very little effort, why wouldn't you, right? So definitely impressed with uh, something as convoluted as this, sh as this ceiling. And yeah, let me move on to the next one here. So the next one I have is I have a runner, right? And I want to see what happened against something, you know, because he, he's clearly very separated from the background and there's quite a bit going on. And once again, the result is pretty good uh, as a starting point. Like if you need to create a clean plate, I can see this being very useful. And you see it even respects that horizon line where the water ends. So if we look at the original here, sorry, the original and the result, it's not just a big mush. It sort of makes sense, but you can make out a pattern, right? Which is why I, I get the feeling it's, it's sort of a, um, a clone tool result from Photoshop. So again, with the in comparing to the InPaint, the InPaint's great for many things, but I can see this being very, very useful now, uh, a, a very useful alternative. Like you see how it keeps these lines here in the sand. Like it, it does a good job. It does a good job. Uh, then finally, I wanted to see what would happen if I if I got rid of, of the, let me just show you my roto here. If I got rid of the lines here in the, in where the hood meets meets the rest of the car right so if i if you in paint it of course it's going to do a great job where there's nothing going on but as soon as you hit those reflections it's not it's not great right it's just a bit blurry mess so i want to see what happens when i go through that and it does a good job all things considered and it this is a, a this is uh, actually a good example compared to what I was showing you before in the ceiling shot where I, I gave those mats a bit of breathing room. What I found in this one is that sometimes when you're trying to keep something around, like if I, if I, if I went a bit broader with these, right, let's say something like that, then what happens is that you lose a lot of the original, right? So whereas here, maybe you want to go tighter and you'll see your reflections start getting, start making more sense and being more continuous. So again, here, I'm going to go back to my plate and see my mat. So if I, if I go tighter on these, right, maybe you start getting a result that makes a bit more sense. Oh. There we go. Okay, so it, it does try to reconstruct it, just try to keep the flow of, of those reflections. And I, I can appreciate it. I, uh, again, this, this is just something that is so shot dependent, um, which is why I, I did want to test it on, on a few different things. But I, in the end, I do think it is a, a worthy addition to Cattery and one to definitely add to your arsenal. I believe the model is fairly, fairly small. So definitely check it out and uh, yeah, make sure you, you keep it in top of mind because what happens with Cattery is that we have it available, but sometimes, you know, I myself just forget sometimes that it's there. It's like, well, yes, there's a solution that can help you. So um, yeah, I'll cover the segment anything in my next video. Okay, cheers.